Um, I wanted to do a quick note on the breaking point. I use that term later on in this in this talk um, after I talk about Marx. Um, I don't mean by breaking point like peak oil or something. Um, I want to put that in contrast because something like peak oil, um, as hard as it would be in the difficult near run, and I'm saying the whole peak oil scenario and everything falls apart, um, that I think will really be what we need to get on a better track, um, getting us off this super technologized civilization that's destroying everything down to DNA and atoms and subatomic particles. Um, that's going to make it very hard to live in this world. I think peak oil is actually not a, it's obviously a lot of things are going to break, um, but most of them I think are good. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of humans may die because they're dependent on a broken system. Um, but I think it'll also liberate a lot of, uh, of other humans. So I don't think that that should be viewed as a breaking point. I'd love it if we could turn things around before something like that could happen. But honestly, if, if we don't and resources run out, that's probably one of the best things the Earth can do for us um, is to have very finite resources. Because the Earth having these resources is just, you know, fucking us really bad. So by breaking point, I mean like the end of life. I don't mean, um, I don't mean like to where life can no longer keep up the fight to keep living. I don't mean at all like peak oil or something like that. Um, but that certainly fits into my worldview, the possibility that peak oil theorists are correct. Um, and it's something that I hope that we can have as a backup. I hope it does exist, that resources are finite and close to the end, but I hope before we get to that point even we can make um, intentional changes that are of our own making that were the change before the crisis. So anyways, um, here's going to be the rest after. I might play a song, but then there's going to be the rest of this episode. I wanted to say a bit about Marx, just some thoughts that are occurring to me now. It seemed a timely time to mention them. Maybe there's some larger historical reason, uh, contextual reason, I should say, that I'm saying them now. Um, but I see Marx, the role that he played as, as pretty huge um, in that and it doesn't matter that he didn't get it right, because I don't think he did get it right as far as um, how deep the oppression goes, but he did go deep enough to attack what he called bourgeois philosophy of the time um, and say, you know what, individuals really don't have that much control over their fates. This is all bullshit. Um, it's much more largely controlled by economic forces, which to him, I guess, seem like the most basic forces. I feel like if more about biology and physics were known at the time, he would have gone to that. Um, but you got to understand, he's going to school when Hegel's like the superstar, and the Hegelian method is something that's powerful. He's going to be able to use that to get real political shit done. So I don't think it's, you know, wrong at all. And um, so he did a huge leap for the, the minds of so many that were being distorted by bourgeois philosophy and maybe they were more distorted before that by uh, feudal religious, uber-religious societies that have, you know, existed to keep oppression 
at a at a very um, sorry I'm driving quite illegal um, so yeah I and I don't know how I pieced all these things together I haven't read a ton of marks but I've read enough and heard enough lectures on him um, that he was an evolving man and he was a political man he wasn't necessarily always writing to get the absolute truth and you know I think he had moments where he was super philosopher but then he had other times where he's super political animal and you have to consider that as you're reading it and you also have to consider what a lot of us now may believe I believe is that we're evolving people our thoughts and ideas and identities are going to change sometimes we like to use new words um, there's a whole a whole array of different forces that are constantly um, especially us today because we've created so many simplified things that just are toxic to our brain um, like from ideas to uh, other things that are toxic to its liberation um, but I think that Marx, in context, um, was in an evolving context very quickly, and, you know, he wanted to see stuff happen, so some of his writings might have been influenced by that. Um, so I'm not saying let's give him a pass or give him a fail, I just think that that's important, so people that are going moving to Marx themselves now... Um, it's not a bad thing as long as they're open-minded and they use Marx for what he's worth, and he's worth a lot to get rid of the, you know, in, the, in a certain sense, what I, what, what I said he would call bourgeois philosophy is fully fruiting now. Look how individualized we are. So in that way, we need Marx or anything like a Marx that um, denormalizes or... Uh, yeah, I guess denormalizes you from this bullshit story that you determine your own, um, you like you're the source of your own power and all that, and you're responsible if you fail. All that nonsense that's spoken about, um, Marx is certainly an antidote to that, at least. And um, so, if people are reading that, that's not the end of the world. There's um, plenty of uh, plenty of used to get elsewhere as well in combination um, from other thinkers from his time and from our time he might have uh, unfortunately overshadowed some other great thinkers from his time um, but I think now with the invaluableness of the internet it's such a great thing Woo! we can at least look and read things that nobody would have ever been able to have that milieu to read from all at once. They would have had um, bits and pieces to choose from that they happen to have available, but now we can have all of it. Um, and that's not to say we should be sitting around reading all the time. Um, that, I think, creates its own issues uh, for those of us who know the issues and then just feel like we got to read and I'm speaking to myself here especially because I'm very much like this um, but uh, yeah so that's that so Marx you know, can live without him but you don't necessarily need to kill him um, if you're feeling like like he needs to be totally gotten rid of I think we could all live per and liberate ourselves without him but Within his historical context, I, 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 I'm pretty sure he's very valuable, even though he might have precluded some things along the way. I think he did push the ball of human liberation along. Um, the sad thing now is people take his some of his uh, recommendations as gospel, and then they're actually slowing down or even reversing what should be done. So that's unfortunate. So try not to fall into that trap. All right. Thank you for listening. Sorry if I droned on and on. I think if I wasn't navigating a car, I would have been able to get a little more done, but um, a little more said and a little more timeliness. But 
such are the choices I've made, and hopefully I will be unmaking some big things now, some big things soon, such as my employment in an increasingly corporatized job, which you wouldn't think of as corporatized, I think, generally, or, or you know, in the last century. But that is working in education. Yep, the state itself is acts just like as the corporate children it breeds and it is certainly a corp becoming corporatized in the education sense. The hierarchy is insane. The amount of bosses, its supervisors is growing. Um, it's just a, it's a failing enterprise and I don't think I could do it for much longer. So therefore maybe I won't have to be in a car as much. Um, I might have to be a, a side squatter to get some of my needs met that aren't in an apartment, that I can't meet in an apartment. Um, fortunately, I'm in a town with a good amount of public land, but they spray pesticides, which is just fucking fabulous. Um, it's one of the many issues that I want to take on, but, you know, there's only one of me and there's so many of you out there who aren't the you I'm speaking to, but the you who just helps the system along. But hopefully this will reach you and maybe you'll I'll be I'll be the one who convinces you that we are in a matrix known as civilization and it is oppressing us and it is a prison and we need to do what we can with our brief briefening lives and um, before it's too late. I think it'd be a shame to end life on Earth because some fucking morons are trying to create black holes in laboratories or some corporation Monsanto has has free play to, like, literally, like, just... It's insane what Monsanto's doing. It, like, it makes... I can't cry about it right now. Like, I don't think I have the emotional investment, but, but there's been times where I felt like... It was, it was like that day when you really realize you're going to die. Um, I never had that day, but I've had days where the fear of nothingness scared the shit out of me. Um, and I feel like that, like that's the kind of, whoa, holy fuck. Like, uh, honestly, I felt it a bit, or I felt it through the person that felt it, if this is even possible. I don't know if you remember Bowling for Columbine, but there he had right before or i forget when it was i didn't realize bowling for columbine was after 9 11 but um the people that were watching the one building burn and had the video and then the other plane comes and like they were just screaming like oh like it, it just it gave me shivers like to hear that to know how fucking insane that must have been for them um and, you know, I'm going to follow this tangent because I do have a little more to say about it. Um, the insanity of, like, war these days is more insane, obviously, than war used to be with gunfire and stuff and, and humans being blown up in, in the smaller ways. Um, but the amount of craziness that passes today for um, war, like... Humans have no, like, animals in general have no instinctual response to big pieces of metal flying everywhere. And that includes cars. We're normalized to it. Um, but we're, like, no animal has ever had to experience death that way. The death you experienced um, was either an animal you're killing or an animal dying or somebody around you dying or being killed or your own death. And your own death um, generally would be, if it was a fast death, like a killing death, so would be either primitive warfare um, or early civilizational warfare where you were using weapons that were, you know, measurable to your means. Um, or you were being eaten by some, some animal that thought a human would make a good meal and wasn't really, which I, I doubt we did make the best meal, so I doubt we were gunned for, um, or not gunned for, but, um,
but today like like the way people are dying like like and to watch like a child killed by like a, being hit by a car or a person run over by a car like these massive massive things like 2000 pounds of of moving force like that shit just never killed people before this is crazy fucking shit and people are dying like it's i'd say it's much more traumatic and the fact that we have medical technology to save people from these deaths they're going to be permanently f like if they have any kind of sensitivity left in in them and many of them push it out because of accidents like this and just general normalization to the daily um drudgery of living around these massive amounts of of combined energy simplify like we're we're so much used to be encountering i think has like um ancestrally so things that are greatly mixed like a, it, it'd be like a chemical composite of a tree is very variable like there's a lot of intricacy um a car despite what you may think about the technology inside it is very non-intricate it's like this big collection of uh, chemistry of, of similar elements that are totally like violent against everything they interact with um, daily like even just sitting there they're giving off um, electromagnetic vibes and as well as plastic toxins that just you your liver would never have to deal with your body would never have to deal with and now we're dealing with them every day so is it any fucking surprise that so many of us have autoimmune diseases even forgetting about the food that sucks and that's just going to make it obviously many many times worse just being around these toxins and then they're pouring flame retardants everywhere it's like the flame retardant industry has somehow like planted people everywhere to every like there's going to be flame retardants on flame retardants it's just it, it's i don't even know how to stop it like i know not participating in it is good and i know speaking about how much it sucks which is what i'm doing now is good um but it might be like slashing tires like just a mass I, you know, and risking, I think it is civil disobedience or uncivil disobedience almost because um, we don't like civilization, but disobeying without hurting people. Um, and I even have some thoughts on the degrees to which maybe people need to be violently acted upon because I don't think everybody's a person anymore, not fully, not in the degree that you need to be. They've had so much of their humanness pushed out um anyways i i hope that in some of the things i said especially later after the whole marx thing which was more academic um i hope that if you weren't thinking about these things you're now considering them as um the degree to which reality and it is fucked up and the degree to which we really need every single person every single animal to rise up against this in certain ways, I can't help but think was uh, is it James Cameron, the guy, the Avatar director, or whoever wrote the story. I can't help think that maybe they were cognizant of this when there was like the um, all the the whole planet of Pandora rose against this human logic of this destructive um, unleashing of logic on everything that was just going to destroy all the beautiful deep lucid connections made in that world you know i can't help but think that he's aware just like the the uh, matrix and and other stories i'm sure that are out there that i haven't come across um that how like fucking crazy our society is and how close we are possibly it's hard to say how much farther we can go, but you don't want to go past the breaking point. That's the whole thing. I think we can realize a breaking po point is somewhere in our future, and I, I don't think it can be that far. When you're having daily deaths because of such unnatural things, 
the amount of daily death because of such unnatural things, the amount of extinctions. Um, and I, I have a meme I'm going to put out there. Extincting is not the same thing as extinction because extincting is obviously something that we're choosing to do regardless of whatever ideological nonsense we put in our head. Um, we're extincting animals and spe entire species. And that's genocide, man. That's a serious crime. And if maybe that's what I need to speak more about because genocide, you know, the genocides that failed, we, we say never again. But the genocides that are succeeding... Not many people are talking about those, and that's a big problem. It's a very, very big problem, and that's why we need to go after consciousness, in my opinion. Um, and consciousness can come through actual acts of liberation, of liberating people that are more bodily, let's say. Um, but if people see their complicity and as well as their actual power to change things, like if we all quit our jobs at once and did it in great unity, we would, we, I don't know if we'd win, but we would stop losing. We would, there would be so much to gain from that. Um, and it'd be a stand worth remembering if there were any to remember. It's what we owe our fucking children. It's what we, we owe our children so damn much. Even if you don't have kids, I just mean the next generation, the generation that has the longest to live on this planet has the shortest to live. Um, I'm going to have to use that somewhere. So we owe them. I, I'm, I'm happy to give my life. And I, I, you know, I like that quote. I'm not, I, I have ambivalent feelings about the American revolution. I do like some of John Adams stuff and I do like the, it, my own, um, I'm not sad to give my life, though my only regret is that I have but one life to give. I can't remember who said that. It's not entirely important. But that's how I feel. I would be happy to die if it made a few people conscious. And it might end up coming to that if there is this oligarchic class that kills people who actually try and make things better. Um, which is very sad that that's a reality. But the guy from El Salvador, I want to say Palmero, but I'm not sure, Rafael Palmero. Um, Allende was, I think, a really good guy, even though he might have been a bit of a political animal. And um, Martin Luther King, the poor people's movement, that was too big of a threat. He went too far with that, so he, he was offed um, or generated enough anger that they look the other way and let him be shot and and many others you know um but the they is not all powerful they i believe that they is that are themselves in bigger cages but cages nonetheless and they're more devoted to keeping us in our small cages and them in their big cages than they are of getting rid of cages in general and that's why they they end up being the enemy but the enemy's far older it began with um, people stop stopping migrating, I believe. Um, and that doesn't mean we have to necessarily go back exactly to that point. But we, um, we need to get off this fucking path. We need to stop creating this path further down the road and killing and blazing this trail. Because the things we're blazing are running out and they're going to be extinct because our trail that we're blazing and there's going to be no need to blaze a trail soon because we're going to literally make desert desertify the earth it's why temperatures are swinging so much it's going to be like a fucking living on mercury you're going to be freezing your ass off when the even though the sun's right there because you have no atmosphere if you're on the dark side of mercury and you're going to be fucking burning up if you're on the light side and then who knows what other factors will come in and, and change the climate but man it's going to be hard to live for the future so I, I my heart goes out to all the the little ones out there that we're not serving when we take time off um, by going to work that's taking time off that's putting the realities out of your mind so you can focus on making a paycheck 
and that's some I can't stomach anymore. Literally, I I've I've too many irritable bowel syndrome or whatever are going on with flora that are all fucked up, um, and I, too many other people do too, and it's got to be um, undone. We've got to fight back. We are the greatest generation, um, or we're the generation posed with the greatest amount of um, adversity. And if we conquer it, we may not be thanked. There might be nobody to even thank us if we don't conquer it. But we owe it. I, I feel that sincerely, being conscious of what I'm doing and what I'm doing when I'm driving, when I'm going to work. So, therefore, I'm... Pretty soon, I'm talking. I'm talking myself into it. I need to leave my work. I need to have um, somewhere else to be, and I can't stand it. Anyways, being there, I feel. I feel the bars now. I can't forget them. It's just too visible to me.